Hey everybody, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Here we're looking at our fourth lesson of our Unit 2 on physics in my physics course. In this lesson we're going to be using the big three kinematic equations in one dimension um, in some uh, complicated problems, more complicated than we saw in our last lesson for sure, um, where these problems and these equations would be very useful to you. All right, so how do we use these? A lot of students uh, know them, but they don't know how to use them because they don't know where to start. Well, let me explain. You see the problem in front of you. You don't see it here, but let's say you have a problem in front of you, and you know that you have these big three equations and this little runt here, which um, is a version of the second equation if the acceleration happens to be zero. These equations, by the way, do not forget that they are used only when A is a constant. You cannot use them when you have variable acceleration values throughout your trajectory, like would be in the real world, but this is a simplification to sort of teach you, like we do in physics all the time, how to do things. So, uh, back to the question, how do we use these to solve problems? Where do we begin? Well, when you have the problem in front of you, I want you to start by writing down all the quantities given to you in the problem in a list. You make a list like this, given, and you write down, or sometimes we say known quantities. I say given, and you write down under here all of those quantities and their values with units. Okay? Then you write down the quantity, usually just one for the easier problems, but maybe more than one that the problem asks for in another list. And we call that wanted, and I list those down here with values and units. And I make a note of other unknown quantities not asked for in the problem under this wanted list. I know they're not technically wanted, but I still make a list of everything unknown under here. And I usually circle or box the one that is actually asked for by the problem or the part of the problem. And then once you have that down, it's much easier to figure out the roadmap uh, of which equations can be used and in what order to get the values for the desired quantities. Usually for easier problems, you would just pick an equation that has all the given info in it plus just one unknown quantity. So you've got all the other variables known and one unknown so you can actually solve it. And you'll, uh, for example, if I had the final velocity, the initial velocity, and the time for the trajectory, I would, and I was asked for acceleration, I would certainly use the first equation because I know three of the four quantities in it. That's an example of a road map. Really, it's just a decision that you make which will allow you to use math properly to solve for an unknown quantity. For easy problems, it will be the quantity asked for. For harder problems, it, you might have to use one equation to get something you need in another equation to solve for a desired quantity. That's common. We're going to start with some easier problems, though, in this lesson. So we have a car that accelerates from 13 meters per second to 25 meters per second in 6 seconds flat. What was its acceleration, assuming it's constant? We have to assume that in all of these problems. So that's the problem. You have it in front of you. Now let's make uh, a list of given quantities. Okay, I'm given the initial velocity, 13 meters per second. I'm given the final velocity. 25 meters per second. How do I know those are VF and V naught? Well, the wording of the problem and the units of the value, okay? Accelerates from this meters per second to this meters per second. Meters per second is reserved in these big three for the Vs, for the velocities. So we know that when we say from a certain velocity, that means that's the starting velocity, V naught. And when it says to another velocity, we know it's the final velocity, VF. Okay, 6.0 seconds, what would that be? That would be T, the time, okay? So those are the things we are given. So we're going to put them in the given list, like this. 25 meters per second for final velocity. Now, you might notice a difference here between my V and this VF. I generally don't need see the necessity for the final because the initial has its own subscript that uh, distinguishes it. So, But you can use it if you'd like, it's not necessary. These are the three things, the three things that we're given. Okay, what are we wanted? We're wanted uh, to provide the acceleration value. Now I'm gonna also make note of the quantities that we also don't know, and we might not need, but we could need to solve them, perhaps to get to the a, and that would be the uh, initial position and the final position, x naught and x. 
We were not given any of that information at all as far as how far it traveled. Doesn't look like we're asked for that. It's we're really asked for the acceleration, so I boxed it here. Now, the roadmap, which equation involves these three known quantities and the unknown quantity we desire. V, V naught, T, and A. Well, the first one. The first one in the list does that, okay? So we will plug in now, after we solve for A, these three known quantities, okay? So here's what that looks like. Solving for A first to avoid any sort of complications by putting numbers in there. That's what I recommend. We solve for A first by subtracting the V naught to the other side, so we get this. Then we will divide both sides by T, and then we'll get this. Aha! So I'm, this is physics, guys. Uh, most physics classes in high school require some facility with algebra. Some require algebra 2 to be passed before you take it. So I'm assuming you have some good facility in algebra with plain old variables. So now A is solved for. So we'll plug in the three quantities at this point. A will be VF minus V naught over T, 25 meters per second minus 13 meters per second over 6 seconds. Now with proper sig figs, you get 2.0 meters per second, okay, when you do your rounding properly. And I've circled that so that I am communicating that that is my final result. Oh, so it takes, uh, ooh, and that would be uh, the improper units there, so I'll put a squared there. 2.0 meters per second squared is the acceleration. All right, let's look at another problem, okay? This is a two-part problem. It doesn't necessarily mean it's harder. It just means it's going to take more time than a problem that asks for one thing. Let's say in this problem is being asked to design an airport for small planes, okay? This is an engineering problem, like civil engineering question. One kind of airplane that might use this airfield much reach a speed of, uh, before takeoff, of at least 27.8 meters per second, okay? It can lift off with a good 27.8 meters per second, and the plane can only accelerate at 2.00 meters per second squared. Part A says, if the runway is 150 meters long, can this airplane reach the required, the required speed for takeoff? You might think, wait, well, it, it said it could reach that. No, it said that this plane needs to reach that. Can it do it if the runway is 150 meters long, if it can only accelerate at this acceleration value? That's what the question's asking. So uh, the roadmap might be a little tricky at first because that's we need our given and wanted tables. And so we have those here. Our given or our known values are the initial position of zero. Now, how do, how do I know that? Well, whenever I'm given a length of my trajectory, which would be the plane accelerating on the, the uh, airway, the airstrip, um, I can always assume that the initial position is zero and the final position is 150. And so that's exactly what's been done here. Zero for x naught and 150 meters for x final. Okay, also, if an airplane is taking off, it is assumed that it starts at rest because, well, it has to taxi to the runway and wait its turn and then it can start accelerating. So it's going to be uh, at rest right as soon as the takeoff begins. So zero meters per second for V naught. We do not know the final speed that this plane can reach in 150 meters, but we do know its acceleration that it's capable of, 2.0 meters per second squared. Now, it could have a smaller acceleration, but we're gonna use the maximum acceleration because of this, the nature of the question. Can this plane reach the required speed? It lets us know that maybe this runway is too short. So we're going to use that maximum acceleration in this problem. And we're going to find V. So which equation allows us in this set to um, find V given the known quantities here? Okay, The third one does, and that's because uh, we don't have any time information. So time would be another unknown quantity you'd include in the wanted list. And I don't know it, and so I can't use either of the first two equations right now because t is another unknown variable. And by the way, the second equation would be useless to us for another reason. Our wanted value, v final, is not in it, and so we would stay away from that anyway. So we're going to use the third equation. Okay, It's one equation that can uh, get us our answer right away. So our goal right now is to solve for 
the final v. Luckily, it's already on its own. It's already isolated. All we have to do is square root the other side to get the values. Now, let me show you how things can get kind of messy when you plug in your values before you finish solving. I've got v squared over here, and I'm going to start plugging in the other values over here. Now, if you look, all the units are uh, a little crazy, okay? And so when I multiply them together, I get meter squared per second squared. Now, for some people, that's kind of uh, stressful, and they've never seen that unit before. They don't know or can't remember that it relates to v squared. So I always solve for the, the quantity first in variable format before I plug things in to reduce complications. But let's look here at how they plug things in. Um, zero for v naught, understood. And uh, two is just in the equation. And the a is acceleration. They didn't uh, type that second zero, which is a significant figure in this problem. Not sure why, but that's what was done. And then times 150 meters, OK? Which gives us 600 meters squared per second squared. And we have to take the square root of that and we will get 24.5 meters per second. Now, technically, we'd have to write 25 meters per second, but um, uh, because we don't have a decimal after that 150. However, most books and most texts and most teachers allow you to be off by one or two sig figs. I'm not so good at, good on that, but that's what we can find in most textbooks. Now, this is not our answer. Okay, our answer was a yes or our question was yes or no. Can this plane reach the required speed for takeoff? It can reach 24.5 meters per second. It requires 27.8 meters per second to be able to lift off. So no, it cannot take off from this runway. So part B asks, well, okay then, what is the minimum length the runway must have? Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna modify for this different question our known and wanted table because now we're asked for a length, meaning a new x final. Okay, and we are told that when we do this the uh, final velocity will be 27.8 meters per second. We're going to uh, set our velocity that we know um, to 27.8 meters per second. We're going to set the unknown to our final x because this is a totally different type of question. So I modified my table now, and um, my known quantity is my final velocity, and everything else is already the same, and my wanted is x, the final distance, the final displacement of the plane before it takes off. Okay, So we're going to find the proper displacement now. Which equation allows us to do this? Well, as you can see, time is still not involved. And all the normal, well, all the part A variables, even though they're switched around, are involved in this table. So it means we will still use the third equation, the third time independent equation but we will solve for x final this time. So um, algebraically, we would have to subtract v naught squared to the other side, and then divide by 2a. And that's what we have here. What we can do, though, is we can leave the x naught here because it's 0. It can be completely ignored because it's 0. Okay. And also, another way to look at this is x minus x naught would be the displacement, or the length, of the runway. So when we plug in our velocities, final minus initial, and make sure you square them in this equation, divided by 2 times the acceleration, we would get 193 meters. So we could see that this runway needed to be almost 200 meters long to accommodate this plane. All right, last simple problem in this set of uh, questions on this lesson. How long does it take a car to cross a 30 meter wide intersection after the light turns green? If the car decelerates from rest at a constant 2 meters per second, seems like that is the acceleration of the day. Okay, we are looking at a question that's asking us how long. Okay, how long is different than how far. Okay, how long is about time. So just keep that in mind. Let's take a minute to make our list of given and wanted quantities first. Okay, here's our equations. Always put those on the screen for you, but let's make our given and wanted list to begin. Okay, so we're given the uh, length of the intersection. Okay, 30 meters. So that means the initial position is 0 meters and the final position is 30. Okay, so you'll see that right here. Also, 
car to cross an intersection after the light turns green if the car accelerates from rest. When you see the word from rest, that means your initial velocity is zero meters per second. Zero meters per second. Then it gives us the acceleration. 2.0 meters per second squared, like this. Okay? So there's our acceleration. Now, what are we wanted to find? How long? So we're wanting the time. So the time is unknown and it is desired. And there's something else we don't know, and that would be the final velocity. But I'm going to uh, leave that alone right now and ask you which equation would allow us to find t given this information. x not x, v not and a. We want t. That would be the second equation. The second equation allows us to find that um, time. But as you can see, this equation is quadratic in time. It has a constant, a t to the first power of term, and a t to the second power of term. So some people might be worried that they have to factor it or will have to use the quadratic formula. Uh, fear not. There are two zeros that we can plug in. The initial velocity is zero, so the second term becomes zero. And uh, the initial position is zero, so the first term is zero as well. So this is still quadratic, but all the uh, lower order terms are gone. So watch what happens when I solve for t. We start with here. Uh, we've got x equals 1 half at squared without the zeros. Then we will continue to solve for t by multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of that 1 half and dividing both sides by a. So it's 2x over a over here and just a t squared by itself. Then the last thing to do is to square root both sides. And then we get t equals the square root of 2x over a. Ah, now let's plug in the known quantity. See how much easier it is to plug in stuff when you solve for variables first? As long as you plug in zeros and cancel out any terms that are zero, things become very, very simple. Now, we could just plug and chug, as my chemistry teacher long ago once said. I keep that tradition alive. We're going to plug and chug here. 2 times 30.0 meters for x divided by a, 2.0 meters per second squared. Gives us a time of 5.48 seconds. We look back at our initial quantities. We're doing dividing. We can have three sig figs. Perfect. So that's the time it takes to get through this intersection. Now, you can always check your work on all your problems. If you wanted to do that, if you had time on a test, for example, all you do is take your answer and plug it back in to check and make sure you get the other given quantities back. So uh, for one example would be to uh, plug things in to uh, get the final velocity. So we could plug it into the first equation and get the final velocity, uh, 10.96 meters per second, which is another unknown. And then we can find the final distance and check that it's equal to 30 like the, the problem gave us in the first place. x equals x naught plus v naught t, assuming an average velocity there. Uh, that's the runt down here. <coughs> assuming there is no change in velocity, you would have to do an average velocity since we know it changes, um, which would be 1 half times uh, the two velocities uh, sum together. That would give us the average. And you get exactly 30 meters when you do that. That's one way to check your answer. There's many ways. But always check to make sure your answer is reasonable just by looking at the value. Okay, So five and a half seconds. That's about how long this takes. That seems rather slow, but uh, 30 meters wide is a decent size intersection. What's really slow about this is the acceleration. Most cars do accelerate faster than that. That's like um, a really slow, like a, like a semi or something. So that doesn't seem super reasonable, but if you got 0.1 second, for example, or 100 seconds, you'd think, okay, that's not reasonable at all. Then you'd have to go back and check your work. Okay, so those are the two ways you can check your work on these types of problems. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. The final lesson five is coming next. For now, this is Falconator signing out.